The Roman Empire had many provinces, some of which were very long lived, lasting for well over a thousand years in the Roman Empire, and others which were quite short lived, such as Trajan's conquest in Mesopotamia or Armenia, some of which that lasted not even two years. But one Roman province is especially fascinating, since it lasted for only around 165 years in the empire, yet it seems that its people were so utterly Romanized in that short a time, that even today the country where this former Roman province stood is the only country still bearing the name of Rome in the entire world, and where a language is spoken that is strangely similar to spoken Latin. How can this be? What happened to the Dacians after the province was given up by the Emperor Aurelian? How can it be that a Latin based language is still spoken there 1700 years later and the people living there call themselves Romans in their own language? There is no other former Roman province that has spawned such contradicting theories with regards to what happened with the native Roman population after the province was given up. The Roman history of what would be known as the province of Dacia started in 106 AD with the conclusion of the Dacian Wars and the full conquest of that region by the Roman Emperor Trajan. The Dacian Wars were quite devastating for the native Dacian population Many were killed and entire cities were depopulated and many, some sources claim as many as 500,000 Dacians were taken captive as slaves and transported to Italy or other provinces of the Roman Empire. But quickly the province was repopulated with settlers from all over the empire, from Italy, Greece, even from far away Syria. Artisans, craftsmen and others came to this new province where they could build up something new. However, it is quite clear that many Dacians were still present, who chose to adapt to the new Roman lifestyle and to adopt the Roman way of life and language. Within just a few years, new roads were built, new towns were founded, many castellums where legions were stationed and the capital of the province would be Ulpia Traiana Sarmitsegetusa, not far from the destroyed ruins of the former Dacian capital Sarmitsegetusa Regia. The northernmost town was Porulissum and within 20 years of its conquest, Dacia was already a very productive Roman province with many cities, roads and most importantly valuable exports such as wheat and of course precious metals, especially gold from the gold mines at Alburnus Maior, modern day Roscia Montana. Dacia shrank somewhat after Hadrian became emperor, but due to the province's difficult geography it would remain under almost constant attack for the next 150 years. In the late 160s, the province saw itself under attack from different tribes because the Roman Empire had been severely weakened by the Antonine Plague. But Marcus Aurelius was an outstanding emperor and after more than a decade of war the province was secured again. The exposed nature of Dacia would continue to be a source of problems. Already some 60 years later, the Goths and the Carpi, who consisted of many non-Romanized stations, managed to invade Dacia and wreak havoc in the province. The Carpi and the Goths were defeated under great difficulty by varying emperors during the crisis of the 3rd century, but by 260 AD the empire had split into three parts and so Dacia was not the main focus of the emperors anymore. It was during Gallienus' reign that Dacia was possibly already given up since the raising of inscribed monuments virtually ceased to exist exactly in 260 AD. During this time, new findings suggest that one called Sponsianus might have proclaimed himself emperor in Dacia in order to restore order, or to secure the borders of the province and to mint their own coins in order to be able to continue having a functioning economy, while having been effectively cut off from the rest of the empire. Sponsianus might have maintained some level of control of the civilian and military population and thus allowed Dacia to exist for a further decade. It was then in 271 that the Emperor Aurelian ordered the evacuation of Dacia as the situation was so dire that even he could not hold the province against the barbarian tribes, which surrounded it from all sides. So a new province of Dacia was established south of the Danube in Lower Maesia, 
being called Dacia Aureliana with its capital at Zerdica. And if you are a Rome nerd like me and chances are pretty high that you are if you are watching this video, then you might be interested in the incredible rings and other Roman accessories which the SPQR shop is building. They make legionary rings, they make rings with different themes, they even make coin replicas, statues, pendants, attributes and terracottas. And the most incredible thing is that they handcraft every single piece. That's right, this is really high quality handcrafted material. There is really no better present for yourself or someone you know who might be a Rome fan. I put the link to their shop in the video description and into the pinned comment and with this link you can get a 10% rebate on every purchase if you type in the rebate code Majorianus. So go and check out their sortiment, it's really quite incredible. And please consider supporting this channel via Patreon or YouTube membership because I really need your help in order to be able to continue my work on late Roman history. Without your support it might not be possible for much longer because this platform here values brainless content a lot more than meaningful research based one. Thank you very much. So back to the Roman province of Dacia. We can see that the Roman province of Dacia had an exceptionally short life and of the around 165 years that the region was a Roman province, much of it was spent in constant warfare, being open to and surrounded on all sides by hostile tribes. Later emperors such as Constantine, Valens and even Maurice as late as 600 AD campaigned in former Dacia but none of them was able to restore it as a Roman province in a lasting way. So how then is it possible that a Latin based language is still spoken there even today and the people living there call themselves Romani, which basically means Romans and that after only 165 years of Roman occupation. So what then happened to the Daco Romans after Aurelian's evacuation? Well, there are basically two competing theories that attempt to explain this Romanian paradox. According to one theory, the Daco Romans, that is the Romanized population of Dacia and all the Romans that had moved there from all across the empire and their descendants, did not abandon the province at all when Aurelian ordered the evacuation in 271 and following years. This would mean that Aurelian's evacuation was purely a military evacuation and that all legions and auxiliary troops were withdrawn, possibly also the administration, but not the native population. This is indeed supported by archaeological evidence because coins of following emperors, even up to a son of Constantine, were found near modern day Cluj Napoca. In the northernmost town of Porolissum, Roman coinage began circulating again under Valens and Daco Romans continued to inhabit Ulpia Traiana Sarmizigitusa even after the 270s because fortifications of the amphitheater were uncovered that dated from later times. According to this hypothesis wherein the majority of the Daco Romans remained in Dacia, the progression of the Romanian populace persisted under a strong influence of the Roman Empire until the 6th century. As long as the empire maintained control over territories along the southern bank of the Danube river, its influence extended to the northern regions along the river. This phenomenon was made possible by the exchange of commodities and the movement of populations across the river. So although diminished in scale and prosperity, Roman settlements endured in the central and southern areas of Dacia for hundreds of years after Aurelian's evacuation. According to this theory, these left behind Daco Romans would then form the core of today's Romanian people. The alternate viewpoint suggests that the migration of the diminished population of Dacia coincided with the need to repopulate the depleted Balkan region. While it's possible that a few Daco Romans remained behind, their numbers were limited in this view. The changes in place names support the notion of a complete withdrawal from Roman Dacia as the names associated with Roman towns, forts and settlements fell entirely out of use in the late 200s. Despite numerous archaeological investigations since the 19th century, definitive evidence of a significant portion of Daco Romans staying behind in Dacia after the evacuation has remained elusive. For instance, the circulation of Roman coins in the former province after 271 
displays similarities with present-day Slovakia and the steppe region of Ukraine. On the other hand, linguistic data and place names indicate the emergence of the Romanian language in Lower Maesia and other Roman provinces south of the Danube within the late Roman Empire. Analyzing the place names in the former Roman Dacia north of the Danube, it appears that alongside names of Thracian, Scytho-Iranian, Celtic, Roman and Slavonic origin, there are some unromanized Dacian place names that were adopted by the Slavs possibly through the Hungarians and eventually transmitted to the Romanians. Similarly, certain Latin place names were transmitted to the Romanians through the Slavs. Both theories make kind of sense and both have evidence for and against. Evacuating 500,000 to a million people, for that is the amount of people that lived in Dacia during the times of Aurelian, would have been very difficult even for Aurelian himself. But then again, they might have started fleeing already earlier in the 230s when the troubles began and this process might have continued for decades later. Linguistic evidence also seems to support the theory more that the Daco Romans settled to the new Dacia Aureliana south of the Danube, as many place names seem to indicate a large Romance-speaking population in the Balkans south of the Danube being present there as late as the 8th to 10th centuries. Linguistic research also seems to point to the view that the Romanian language developed starting around the late 6th century to the south of the Danube. It is also noteworthy that ancient chroniclers only started mentioning the Vlachs, that is the older term for the Romanian people, to the north of the Danube only after around the 12th century and not before. This gives more credence to the migration theory in which the Romanian people emerged south of the Danube in former Maesia and then migrated back north over the Danube at some point, possibly around the 11th or 12th century. Of course, a combination of both scenarios is also thinkable. Some Daco Romans might have stayed behind in fortified cities. Others might have fled into the mountainous regions, retaining their spoken vulgar Latin and only slowly mingling with the Slavs, while the main part of the Daco Romans might have migrated to the south of the Danube and then developed another form of Proto-Romanian language. And then they might have migrated again north of the Danube and mixed with the Daco Romans that had stayed behind. I personally find it somewhat hard to believe that the Daco Romans stayed behind in their entirety in former Roman Dacia and that the Romanian language had formed there despite over thousand years of continuous migrations from countless Germanic and Asiatic tribes that had invaded the area. I think that the Daco Romans that stayed behind mixed with the Goths, the Gepids, Huns, Avars, Slavs and all the Germanic tribes that invaded these lands while a smaller part lived secluded in the mountains, possibly retaining their Latin-based language. But I think that the largest part of the Daco Romans had migrated to the south of the Danube in the late 200s, where probably the bulk of the Romanian language then formed after the Slavs invaded in the late 6th and early 7th centuries, as this is also supported by name places of a Romance language from the Balkans south of the Danube. You can find place names in the Kosovo, Albania and Serbia region of a Romance language dating from around as late as the 9th century, which would support the migration theory. It must also be noted that Romanian does not have Eastern Germanic words, which would certainly have happened had the Daco Romans mixed over hundreds of years with the Goths, Gepids and the countless other Germanic tribes that had settled in former Roman Dacia. The migration theory, in my opinion, would also explain how Romanian was able to remain so similar to Latin in a sea of Slavic languages. It is just astounding how it is possible that Romanian remained so similar to Latin despite only 165 years of Roman Dacia's existence. The migration theory, in my opinion, explains better how this is possible. In that view, the largest part of the Daco Romans fled south of the Danube, but north of the Jirecek line that is the line which separated the Latin and Greek speaking parts of the Roman Empire. We can see that the line does not follow the borders of the Eastern and Western Roman Empires and that Latin was also spoken in parts of the Eastern Roman Empire. 
especially Dalmatia and Illyricum, were part of the Roman Empire for a very long time, until Nepos was killed in 480, and then in the kingdoms of Odoacer and Theoderic, Latin was continued to be used unchanged by the population. Then the Eastern Roman Empire reconquered the whole of the Balkans and thus Latin was still continued to be used until the Slavs then conquered the whole region in the early 600s. So then if the Romanian people formed south of the Danube in parts of Dalmatia, Illyricum or Dacia Aureliana, they would then have been subjected to Latin influence for around 500 years, from Trajan's conquest in 106 AD to the Slavic and Avar invasions of 603 and following years. Because the other parts of Europe where Romans languages are spoken, they all were part of the Roman Empire for at least 500 years. This is why the Romanians then have such a strong bond to the Romans and why they call themselves Romani, which sounds very similar to Romans in their own language and why their language has retained such a similarity to Latin, because they were also living in a Latin-based part of the Roman Empire for 500 years. Then proto daco romanian formed in the following centuries under Slavic influence, therefore Romanian has quite a lot of Slavic words and then the Romanians would have migrated back north over the Danube in the 1100s. In my opinion, this is the only way to explain the strong connection of Romanians to Latin and to the Romans, because I think that 165 years just were not enough for utter Romanization. But that is just my opinion, so please take that with a grain of salt. And many Romanian nationalists hate this opinion because they imagine a direct and unbroken line back to the Dacians and to the Romans in Roman Dacia. But I personally find that kind of unlikely and for me it does not subtract in any way or form from their connection to Latin and to the Romans if they formed south of the Danube. As I said, a mixture of migration and stay behind in Dacia is also possible. But I still think that even in that scenario, the larger part would have been evacuated by Aurelian or fled on their own after the 230s and only the smaller part would have stayed behind. In any case, the whole story is utterly fascinating, especially because it is one that cannot be definitely proven or refuted yet, and both the migration and the stay behind theories have some good arguments. Already in the 15th century, travelers from Europe such as Poggio Bracolini or Flavio Biondo noted with surprise that the people of Wallachia called themselves Romans in their language and noted the similarity of their language to Latin. Or the French traveler Pierre Lescalopier, who wrote in 1574 that those who lived in Moldavia, Wallachia and the vast part of Transylvania, quote, consider themselves as true descendants of the Romans and call their language Romaneste, which is Roman, end quote. Romanian certainly evolved from vulgar Latin and shares an astounding 77% lexical similarity to Italian, followed by French at 75% and by Spanish at 71%. So it is absolutely fascinating that despite the heavy Slavic influence, the Romanian language stayed so similar to vulgar Latin and hence to Italian. Romanian is actually nearer to vulgar Latin than Portuguese or French almost as close as Spanish. This is a bit of a personal video for me, because I originally come from Romania, so therefore I feel a bit of a connection to the history of the Romanian people. Maybe future archaeological findings and precise genetic analysis will shed more light on what happened to the Daco Romans after Aurelian's evacuation so that we can have final proof if the migration or the stay behind theory is the correct one. But we can see how utterly fascinating Roman history is and how it can sometimes affect us even here and now. And please like and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting my work on Patreon or via a YouTube membership because the long-term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. This channel would not work without our amazing Patreon and YouTube members and I want to thank each and everyone who is supporting this channel in any form. Thank you very much.
And if you want to learn more about another fascinating former Roman province, Britannia, you can watch this video here in the upper right corner. But if you want to learn more about the forgotten Roman province of Spania, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias Tibiago and bene valete.